Welcome back everybody. Today's lesson I'm going to go over the higher time frame power of three and the Judas swing. Before I really get into the nitty gritty of the power of three and the Judas swing, I'm going to just draw out what you guys would expect and how you guys can narrate this when you're framing your trades um, each day in the market. So basically the power of three is the idea that you have New York midnight, which is when the market opens up, right? You have New York midnight. Um, if you trade smart money concepts or ICT concepts, this is what you're going to want to reference for the beginning of the day. So if you look at the daily time frame on TradingView normally, that's not really going to give you the actual algorithmic start of day. It starts at New York midnight. So Basically, let's say that you are going to have a bullish bias for the day. This is what you would expect. You would expect price to open the day up, New York midnight, and you would expect price to go below opening price for New York midnight. And this could be coined a couple of different terms. The actual term is accumulation. I like to refer to this as the manipulation, and I'll go over why in just a second. But price sells off below New York midnight on a bullish day in the best long opportunities will come below or right around or near New York midnight on a on a bullish day, right? And the next move, a part of the power of three, you have move number one, which is the what I call manipulation, or you could call it the accumulation. And then you have the expansion, right? So you have price expanding, making the actual move of the day, putting in the high, and then at the end of the day, coming back down and distributing, right? So these are the three moves of the power of three. You have accumulation, expansion, distribution, or what I like to call it, manipulation, expansion, distribution, or accumulation uh, at the end of the day. And this is the higher time frame power of three. And this move right here, this false move, this fake out, whatever you'd like to call it, this is what is referred to as a Judas swing. And if you were to look at a bearish example, it would just be the same exact thing, just flipped on its head. So if we just made this chart inverse, this is what a bearish example would look like. You have the manipulation, or you have, in this case, the distribution uh, to the upside above open price, and then you have the expansion lower, uh, AKA the actual move of the day, and then you have the reaccumulation um, back up at the end of the day. It's important to remember that that is all in reference to the daily perspective, the higher time frame, power of three. And I want to show you guys an indicator. I did not make this indicator, but it is called the higher time frame, power of three. If you just go to your indicator section on TradingView and just type in HTF PO3, just like this, you should be able to see the higher time frame power of three indicator um, pop up. And basically right here, you're gonna wanna toggle use New York midnight. You see if I toggle this off, it will actually change. It will, it'll just use the normal um, opening of the brand new day for, for normal trading view hours, right? So you like to toggle this on. The time frame that you, know, you wanna use is the one day because um, it's narrating what's happening during this day of price action. And as you guys can see right here, you'll see that New York midnight opened up right here. And then you'll see that price obviously went back and forth. And this right here is what is being referred to currently um, as the Judas swing. And if I play this price action out, you'll see why, because price does end up selling off. And if you had a bearish bias coming into the day, if you had uh, a bias that the draw on liquidity was going to be you know, lower or potentially is going to be these lows right here, for example, you guys can see in hindsight how this has played out and how we've actually traded through those lows. And then coming into the end of the day, we do a very small reaccumulation back up. And every day is going to look a little bit different, but you guys can see how in that example, how this was the Judas swing up above New York midnight. And then we had the actual expansion lower taking out sell side liquidity to actually create the trade of the day. Here we have another example. So we see New York midnight open up right here. And then what do we have happen during the overnight session coming into New York open? New York Stock Exchange opening bell is 8.30 central time for me. That is one hour behind New York local time. So that's why this is 8.30 instead of 9.30. But just adjust it for whatever time zone that you're in. But just to show you guys, New York midnight open right here. And then price rallies up during the overnight session coming into opening bell. This is referred to as the Judas swing. So everything from the open 
all the way to New York Stock Exchange open or opening bell in this case is the Judas swing up or AKA the manipulation. And then you guys have price selling off the rest of the day all the way through the close of regular trading hours. And then we get this small little reaccumulation back up to finish the day. But you guys can see how this is acting as a fake out, acting as a manipulation, right? In a seller's market, you're gonna see price manipulate to the upside to take out sell side throughout the day and vice versa in a bullish scenario. But it can be nice to have this indicator as an option just to toggle on and off as you're looking at charts in the morning because it annotates the New York midnight for you. And if you're, again, if you're bullish for the day and you notice that we're below New York midnight or near uh, New York midnight, those are gonna be generally where the best setups form for the day and vice versa in a bearish scenario. As you guys can see, if you had this toggled on and you're looking at price right at New York Stock Exchange open or shortly thereafter, and you were bearish, right? You believed that price was going to head for lower prices and take out sell side liquidity. It would be really easy for you to frame a trade in this price action because you're already anticipating price to head down. And you know that if you're getting short for the day, that the best entries for getting short are going to be above or at New York midnight. And as you guys can see here, just looking at this price action, this would have been also a pretty clear entry just on this 15 minute time frame without refining anything at all. This would have been a pretty clear entry to enter off this for value gap to head lower right after New York lunch. Third and final example, again, using the S&P 500 here on the 15 minute time frame. what do we see? We have the 8.30 opening bell candle marked out and we see that price right before New York Stock Exchange open was below, again, New York midnight. And again, if you were bullish for price action for the day and you felt like price was gonna go take out these levels of buy side liquidity, these highs resting above where price was when market opened up, that's where you could have looked to target for your bullish bias day. And as you guys can see, uh, where does price uh, offer a good entry even on just this time frame without scaling in whatsoever is right here on the 15 minute time frame. It offers one little puncture into this fair value gap right here an hour into market open and then we see price rally to the upside. And this would have been an example where maybe you didn't get an entry right at or below New York midnight, but it doesn't always have to be right at or below. It's just in a bullish scenario, those are gonna be usually your best or most optimal entries, right? And if we were to scale in here in time frames, we could do some refining and see if there was even an entry that was offered based off of any sort of entry model that any ICT student would like to use. So dropping it all the way down to the one minute time frame, it looks like this would have been a kind of a difficult day to really find much of anything. There wasn't a whole lot of fair value gaps offered uh, as far as an entry goes inside of there up until you get to the slightly higher time frames, like the 15 minute time frame where price does drop down into that fair value gap and just for fun let's drop it in and see if there was potentially an institutional order flow entry drill that you could have used coming out of there and it looks like if you were bullish and you were anticipating that there would have been an opportunity to enter in a fair value gap right here oh extend that across in time looks like that was offered right there this load never did get breached right there, and then it looks like that probably would have been your best case scenario uh, for your two possible entry points, unless you were willing to start getting long, you know, as price continued to push higher up into here. If you were really bullish and you were anticipating more continued bullish order flow, this could have been an entry that you could have anticipated as well. But this context, this lesson is really just to show you guys how to identify and how to anticipate the Judas swings of these moves day in and day out so you can anticipate you know where price is looking to go throughout the remainder of new york session for both am and pm session and then you can also use it to frame potentially a late end of day pm session trade as well as you could potentially anticipate for price to then pull back to end of the day but this is the power of three guys this is the judas swing and i hope this video was helpful for you in one way shape or form if it was i would ask that you consider leaving a like comment and a subscription and uh, let me know what you guys would like to see next have a great day everybody and i'll see you guys in the next one